Spotify is taking advantage of artists. They don't really care. If you're somebody who feels like that and you're not getting your worth, your value from these streaming platforms, we have a proposed solution from the Joe Budden podcast on how you should be using your streaming strategy to make yourself richer and taking advantage of Spotify instead of letting them take advantage of you. We're going to talk about this strategy and how we think it could work out. The discourse around this was crazy on Twitter. It was going viral. This is yet another episode of No Labels Necessary. Relying on streaming as an income source is an impossible reality unless you are the time of the time. Relying on streaming as an income source uh, is, is impossible. It's less, it's more possible than I feel like most people think, but let's play the whole clip. You can do something where it's like, I put it on streaming for a short time and mm-hmm. then I take it off and it's for sale only. You can like, do that. Like, like, like that's the commercial. Yeah. I got it on streaming mm-hmm. for a month. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. But after that month, it's I'm, I'm pulling it. And now if you want it, you have to purchase it. That's the only way to get it. Yeah. We already tried that. They already tried that? Yeah, but you remember the exclusive days? That's what I was thinking. <laughs> This is the reverse exclusive model. Yeah. Remember, they used to start with exclusives and then put it on Spotify. Oh, he even yeah. saw That's Jay-Z was, yeah. do stuff like that where he started on title for years, yeah. you know, and then yeah. put some stuff on Spotify. All right. Um, Apple, uh, I mean, the Apple Chance the Rapper deal, mm-hmm. he started on mm-hmm. Apple and then put it on Spotify. Frank Ocean. That's the typical, saying? right? Yeah, exactly. Frank Ocean. <laughs> but then you got the reverse. I'm going to put it out there. And then if you want to continue to consume it, then you got to pay me, right? You got to come behind my paywall, my Patreon, whatever. That's the idea. Now, there's a lot of discourse around this, and I think we're going to get deeper into business models and things you need to consider in terms of how you want to handle this situation than any other episode we have so far. So please listen if you really take your career seriously, because I think there's going to be a lot of things to think about here, like for real, for real. Because I love the conversation that it's, it's had, but there's a couple of realities that I think some people don't consider mm. in this. So one, one thing that I think is going to be beneficial on the positive side, because we're going to go for and against, I think the pros and cons. Mm-hmm. On the positive side, I'll start. What we probably would see is for people who do have a fan base, they would get more streams in that period of time, right? That month than they normally would because of the scarcity aspect. Let me listen as much as possible before I know it's going to be gone. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't think about that. That would be interesting. Yeah. Right? And then in terms of teasers and things like that, but then that's if you put the whole song out there as a teaser, not just a snippet of the song, because that's weird. We already got social media for that. You can't do that. Yeah, and the song's going to be long enough to do that. What you mean? Well, like, we're talking about the snippet would need to at least be 31 seconds, you know what I'm saying, to, to count. Oh yeah, and to get the algorithmic push, you know, a lot of songs that they be like two minutes, maybe two and a half. So you're talking about a quarter right, of right, the right, song, right. and the snippets like that point, you might as well have put the whole thing out. So yeah. yeah. So getting into the details of this, right, and bi- different business models and how people actually think around this. Um, here's a comment from Kennedy Clark. He said, and shout out to Curtis King by the way, because he was where I first saw this posted on Twitter. Then I started seeing it pop up everywhere else. Um, the biggest roadblock to this is how phones are set up now. Streaming is convenient while buying songs and then listening to those songs requires so many steps. It's a turn off to listen to them. Facts. Facts. I think. Facts. Hey, man. I think I speak for all of the lazy music fans out there. You know, I like to think of myself as lazy music fan uh-huh. representative. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like, I remember what it was like to download songs and and buy songs and that two or three extra steps versus me just popping up in Spotify and a quick search and it comes up. You can't you can't take that away from me, man. I'm not I'm not going for that. You gotta think about the people regardless. <laughs> I think a lot of times we have all these anti industry sentiments and then think, oh, I'm just gonna go over here and do this. But then people get knocked on the head because they realize it's not just the industry itself, right? A lot of the industries model is built off of human behavior the yeah, fans. fan behavior yep. so you're bl- you blaming the industry when the industry would like to make more money from the fans too and i'm not saying that, that you shouldn't be making more money from what the industry is taking but trust me like, like it's coming from somewhere because yeah. other industries and other 
products are getting more money per stream. You think the industry wants to charge only $12.99 for unlimited songs, right? If, if they could charge $50.99, you know what I mean? Or $100. Yeah. Like, is it, so some of this constraint is built off of the fans. And I think people have to realize that first and foremost. Yeah, no, I agree with that. It's like artists and the higher labels structured morally on some of those things are fighting the same fight. Like I said, like everybody wants to be paid more. Everybody is, is wishful thinking, I think, mm -hmm. at this point because we're so deep into that etch of the human behavior, right, where it's like, hey, and it's not even just in music, right? Like we're seeing this in so many different industries, TV, you know, TV and movies, mm -hmm. um, music, you know, even like sports. But I be seeing on like my TV sometimes, like you can buy like packages of seasons, you know what I'm saying, for like, like a small fee, so I'm like, oh, yeah. everybody is is kind of having to bend to the new consumer behavior of like, now I everybody. want everything bundled together really neatly and nicely mm -hmm. for, you know, less than $15 a month or yep. $15 per. And if you can do that, I will consume everything you want to give to me. And if you can't do that, I will leave and go somewhere else. Yeah, that, I want that, that do infinitely, it. by the way. Because I'm about yeah. to run through this content that you spent five years making in three hours, you yeah, know, <laughs> in point. three days or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and now I need some more. Feed me. It's a crazy beast and it's a model that's unsustainable. Nobody's super happy in it. But that's something that has to be considered in these conversations. Because a lot of times, I'll go deeper into it like later in this conversation. And we want y'all's comments for this podcast. We really need as much commentary around it different perspectives, et cetera. Like let's make this comment section for those who are watching on YouTube, especially like let's, let's make this a, a one of great substance. I want to hear some <laughs> ideas that I haven't seen before or what we don't discuss, but like artists, it, it's always like the anti always. I noticed this like early on, right. For the antis to exist, they need establishment. One, they need something to push against. Right. Mm -hmm. But also a lot of times you need the structure to then, do your own thing, right? Mm -hmm. So not just to be against like, oh, everybody believes this, and then now I'm the anti, so I'm counterculture. There's so there's a need of primary culture to be counterculture, but beyond just the ideals of it, when you talk about functionally, there's a need for structure to be for the chaos to exist, right? Because mm -hmm. everybody can't be in chaos. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if there's no structured industry and all artists became their own little businesses, the numbers wouldn't pan out like artists think. Yeah, 100%. And what you'll end up finding instead of artists hating the industry, artists will be hating on artists like they're hating on the industry. Mm, like why does his app got... 5,000 people. For whatever reason. Yeah. They're go people will find ways, right? Yeah. And Because then, then you will find the people who are more business savvy. At the end of mm -hmm. the day, the ones who are more business savvy, more connected. personality connected, it's still going to become something. Mm -hmm. Artists will begin to click up more, right? Because it's just it's just going to be the model, right? Yeah. right? That's It has to exist. Structure will find its way to exist. And then there's always going to be people who aren't a part of whatever the core structure is. And people don't account for that sometimes. It's like, yeah, you would be losing in this other model too. You actually might have a better chance in this model because you aren't La Russell. You aren't Russ. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? And I'm not just to say them that you aren't Nipsey Hustle. You like you aren't you don't have that type of hustle mentality. You just want to create the music? Like boy, if you talk about if there was music industry anarchy out there, then just creating the music, you really aren't gonna get the money. Now, that's a good point. You made me think about something I hadn't thought about before, right? But you, you look at the streaming model, right? And the the way it's set up is the work and effort of the bigger artists brings attention to the smaller artists, mm -hmm. right? So if like if it was isolated and yes. Kanye had a, a, a platform and Lil yes. Who the Fuck Whatever had a platform, Kanye is obviously going to over-index and get most of the attention. But in the streaming economy the attention that Kanye brings to his music has a potential to trickle over to somebody that's lesser known because of the algorithm and playlisting and things like that. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. So it's like by separation, you literally isolate yourself to whatever you can provide. And we already know artists have an issue with, a lot of artists have an issue with being able to provide the jump start exactly. to get their music out exactly. there. It might be one of the few places that trickle down economics does have 
some pretty clear yeah. wins, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but on the other end, when you look at that, <laughs> to do it properly, I saw some platform in the comments, and I, I don't know how much they, because they say they're solving this problem or working on this problem, but they, um, to do this properly, because I didn't actually look at what they're doing, it, you have to have a streaming platform still. Mm-hmm. It can't be like iTunes, I download to my device locally, you know, that type of thing. Mm-hmm. It needs to be basically Spotify, and then you allow everybody to charge for their money. I mean, charge for their work on the platform, but mm-hmm. I'm consuming it out of the same library. So that part still has to stay consistent, which means that company would probably be more of a payment processor in terms of their model, all right, versus yeah. paying getting paid per stream. Yeah. It was like, oh, I paid five dollars to listen to your music, and then I paid twenty dollars to listen to I don't know, a Jay Z track, and I paid fifty dollars for this other track, right? Yeah. And then I, me as a company, I get money from that, and you get to get whatever you decide to be worth, which is also going to be pressed pressed down based on whatever the fans are willing to pay, all right? But from a fan experience standpoint, I get to have it all in this consistent library. That, to me, is probably the most likely um, solution, generally speaking, but I still even got thoughts about that. But the, but the point is, why that has to be a thing, we go back to the isolated platform model, right? Mm-hmm. An isolated platform model, fans aren't trying to pay for another subscription. So you like people don't want to pay for more subscriptions now. You think dividing every artist up to their own individual subscription is going to work? And letting them pick the price? Yes. <laughs> it's why recurring or like recurring revenue programs like a Patreon isn't going to work for most artists. Mm-hmm. It's not going to like a paid group or something isn't going to work for most artists. Mm-hmm. Why? Because if everybody does that, then now it's too much. Yeah. But having a few artists do it, so that's the balance. It's like, oh, yeah, you have this insert special artist who has their situation moving in one way. I have my, let's say, my paid community, or I have uh, where you're paying me kind of like a Patreon, right? And they're paying me just for the music, not any extra. Like, there's going to be a certain set of artists that can exist because this structure exists. Remember, that's mm-hmm. the counterculture to this. There's going to be some other artists that do all types of unique things. But everybody can't do that. Once everybody does it, then you know shit goes sideways. Yeah, no, it it, it would literally force music fans who have to to physically sit down and figure out who are the artists they like enough to want to support mm-hmm. in a way that fans don't really have to think about it that deeply. They don't. For I would argue probably eighty percent of the artists they listen to. Once you know, like tour season starts and. People start selling merch. You have to kind of make that decision. But in your listening habits, I don't really have to sit down and think like, damn, do I feel like supporting Kanye today or do I feel like supporting, you know what I'm saying, Lil Whoever. But in that model, I have to literally look at, you know, we, we talk about the average streaming platform prices where between like 9 and $15 a month. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So now, I don't know, if I got a media budget of 100 a month, you telling me I can only pick between like six people, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, do I have to now decide... You know, that I like you enough to do that. And then somebody new comes along and now I got to decide who do I want to bump out yes. to start to be able to support this person. That shit would be chaos, bro. It would be terrible. But so <laughs> at LJ the Giant, L. Dre the Giant said, as a fan of music, I just buy vinyls and merch to support artists. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. That exists. That's something we're already doing. Yep. I don't think it's a good idea to make things difficult for your average fan to access your music. Yep. I still haven't heard Donda 2, and I already have the stem player. LOL. It was just too much of a hassle, in yeah. my opinion. I already bought the thing. I still didn't want to do it. But I can't consume it. <laughs> and that sounds good. He still paid me money. Yeah. But <sighs> low-quality experiences have a in the, on the long tail is going to stop your money and stop your branding. So it's like, yeah, mm-hmm. I bought the stem player, but I never consumed it. Now you don't get to do all of the things that come from the consume from manipulating the people who consume the music, mm-hmm. right? Selling them additional things. The concert periods aren't as rich or whatever. Like mm-hmm. just things are smaller because you gated it. Even if they have the thing, it's harder to experience. That is an additional gate. And I think what people miss, right? Well, we already talked about the fans, right, being the end of the funnel. I think 
let me I saw another comment actually. Here it is. This might generate revenue, but if and this was at Pastel ETH, that by the way, ETH. This might generate revenue, but if your goal is impact and longevity, it might work against you. How many Kanye fans have actually heard Donda 2, which was exclusive to the Slim player? It's crazy. Right? Donda, Donda 2 catching strays. It is. <laughs> two people in here. This is not them count like quote to their comment. This is two separate people. And it's a real thing. So this is what I'm saying people don't realize. I thought about it with Prince earlier. Like, this is like maybe 2006 to 10 or whatever. I was on YouTube in that period, listening to all this music. Prince was not on YouTube at all. And I wanted to consume. I messed with Prince already, right, to a degree because of what I knew of Prince. And my dad would be talking about Prince or, I, you know, all that stuff. Shoot, from Dave Chappelle, all of it, right? I, I messed with Prince. But I wanted to hear more of his music to, like, really, really know his music catalog. And I couldn't. I couldn't find it nowhere. And the only way to get it was, like, to buy it, buy it. I didn't even know how to buy music, like for real, yeah. you know. And I never went to figure out how to buy music either. <laughs> like I, I just didn't, right? And I hated it because I had <laughs> as much respect for him as I did because I came from such a musical background. But I was like, man, people who don't even know him, they're not gonna have time to discover him. Mm -hmm. Like the other young people aren't gonna like after the generations after he's just gonna like be gone. Not because he's not good. But because nobody else can discover him and get close to him past the generation that already rocks with him. Fast four years later, um, I can't remember if it was before or after he passed, but now he's, he has more stuff that's out on YouTube. He, he released the catalog, you know, and all, and all that, um, and allowed stuff. But he was notorious for just getting rid of stuff. So it goes back to that longevity. Mm -hmm. Like the long term, people can experience you if you're behind this gate. It becomes akin to, ge to geographically, basically, to experience you i actually have to travel to i don't know rural idaho to mm -hmm. actually listen to your music geographic like on the internet version of that right i yeah. have to go find yeah. this place go and, and 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 go this journey to be able to consume you and there's there's a push and pull you get more money in the short term so maybe the model becomes i do more some things out there and I do some things gated. I do something, but not, but to make your entire model gated, there's a reason that this doesn't exist. There's a reason that this, this, this does not exist. Yeah. I promise you, um, it's very, it's so much harder when it comes to the economics. Like these are just basic, basic numbers. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I, I love the emphasis on the impact, right? Because not only are you shortening your impact on people, you're also shortening the impact that people can have on you, yeah. right? So, you know, I've always looked at the the intel of fan cons consumer uh, behavior is how they react to the music once they hear it, right? So it's like, I think there's a part of a fan's brain that understands like, hey, I'm paying a very little amount of money for this thing mm -hmm. that you put so much work into, especially if they really follow you and they, or they follow multiple artists enough to see the work that's put into it. Like I was just telling the client, like, you know, what's so fascinating today is that I would argue that our generation of music fans are the most educated about the music industry than any other generation of music mm -hmm. fans. So they they have a lot more empathy for music artists, maybe than fans of, of, of other sure. years. You know? For sure. And so a lot of times the way they will repay the fan is, hey, now I'm gonna go make TikToks to your music that help you get exposure. Now I'm gonna go make sure I play your song in my car so that all my friends hear it while we're going to school. Now I'm going to, you know, I got this school project coming up and I'm gonna use your song for the intro to it because I, I you know, I feel like this is the least I can do. Now you cut all that off, mm. you know what I'm saying? Because now it's only the select group of people that do buy into it that have to decide to do all those things. We already know, shit like that is just a numbers game. It might take you hitting 100,000 people just to get 1,000 people to move. So yeah. if you now only have 1,000 people to work, you know, it might just be 10 people moving around, you know what I'm saying, what you have put out there. So now you're shortening your impact on people and shortening the impact they can have on on your career. And I do think it, it's for sure a, a short-term play, right? Hey, I can cap right now. I can get more money per fan now. But what we're starting to see 
is that the real money for music comes from catalog building and 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 adjusting fan behavior over a, a long time, right? How can I take little Timmy that discovered me today and make sure that he's still a fan of me when he's 50 years old, yep. you know what I'm saying, and, and, and still got more disposable income? And it's like if you can't reach a lot of people to make sure that you not only have new people coming in that could possibly hit that, but to also cover the people that are going to leave, right? Because, yep. you know, we've talked about this before. You're going to drop some duds, which is going to turn some people off. It's just it happens. All of our favorite mm-hmm. artists have dropped the song for us. Man, let's go, I don't know, bro. This ain't yeah. this ain't the one. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to fall back off you for That's a little true. bit. That's true. That's a whole <laughs> pressure that artists don't feel right yeah. now where it's like, oh, they're going to leave me. Like, watch them cancellations when they don't like this project. Exactly, bro. Ooh. Hey, man, y'all ain't never dealt with, uh, what's the shit, the chargeback, bro. When you're dealing Ooh. with a chargeback, <laughs> it's a whole different set of issues, bro. So it is like, it's, it's like it's a, it's a great short-term play. I do agree with that. Ooh. But I think it's a terrible long-term play. Because now, oh, my God, bro, it's all coming to me. It's all coming to me when you say it like that, too. Because now we talk about artists don't really look at the fact that they're serving fans. We yes. make, they make it so much about them. Mm-hmm. Right. And they don't realize that you're fa- you're serving somebody in terms of entertainment. They have to enjoy or want to experience this. And based mm-hmm. on their experience, that is how the relationship go uh, continues forward. Bad, good, whatever. That's how your reputation is built. And it's easier with all of this chasm in between, but when it's direct to that extent, it's pure customer service, baby. Like, bro, like, like, dog, like, you literally are going yeah, to feel the yeah. brunt, the complaints. It's a whole nother level. Man, man, like, just like any other business, like, they're judging it like, like a meal. Yeah. Every exactly. single song, the feedback, the chargebacks, the, 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 um, the fraud <laughs> purchases. <laughs> They they wanted to hear that project real quick just to cancel right after, or they use somebody else's credit card. All them other things. Look, that it just is what it is. Like we talk about at scale in that way, it will be very interesting. But and to get dig deeper into that mentality that I think people are missing out on is this guy right here. At my mind, said, "Who wants to pay for the pass?" LOL. Oh shit. That doesn't even like, I can't even make that make sense personally. Like, I I almost want to say, what do you mean? Because if he's just, just generalizing, it's like that song already happened or whatever. Like, I don't connect with that because <laughs> he was like, <laughs> but that's how fans, there's people out here that are like, that's how they think. Yeah. And it's a lot of them. It's a lot more lot that in the same way I talked about the, uh, the other day where we were going through all these comments and fans didn't have as much empathy as artists would expect because they're like, yeah, we're working something that uh, yeah. we don't like. This is a job that I don't like. Right. And you're not willing to do content or things like this. Like there's a lot of people when you look through comments that are not artists, they don't understand the artist complaint mm-hmm. outside of maybe not getting your value. But once it gets into the finer details of you're not doing X, Y and Z or you won't or the fact that you have to work to get to a position higher to then experience success and more freedom like for them, they're they just don't connect. I'll just leave it at that. Damian Ritter on the other side, he says, these guys clearly don't work with any successful independent artists today that stream well. I'm not advocating for relying just on streaming. You should have many revenue streams, but there are many independent artists that do. Stop taking advice from these podcasts, LOL. Mm. All right, Dane. <laughs> Dane, Dane talking, he coming like that was that was pretty direct. I ain't, I ain't never seen Dane talk like that, man. I really, I probably, I really haven't like like that. <laughs> so I was like, bro, that shit oh, really touched him, bro. This like. kinda... <laughs> and I think when you for the people who do work with artists and see what they're making from streaming, there's a lot of artists that are doing five thousand a month, ten thousand a month. You know, yes, we have those way bigger numbers and mm-hmm. people. Are making like 75k i think there was a nick video d video i saw someone say it was making 75k a month kind of price was making like 200k a month all right we've seen those numbers and of course the big big artists who are signed to the label but probably aren't making it all by themselves and busting it down with somebody else right mm-hmm. but 5k a month off of streaming and i know some who aren't even going crazy with content that are making that right yeah facts all right that is a reasonable amount of money 
right? Now, the amount of money you have to live and then reinvest in career, like it's a, it's a tight rope to walk, right? Um, but when we look at these numbers, we kind of experienced some of this. We ain't gonna go too deep in this, but when the Spotify made the announcement about the thousand streams, you saw a lot of artists that realized, oh, wait, I'm good. And I don't even mm-hmm. understand why you would not be able to hit this number. Mm-hmm. All right, there's just different levels of this, different divides of artists that are confused or hurt based on whatever the barriers are. That's what we're going to consistently find. So, yes, yeah, shout out to Dame because I don't think people realize at how achievable it is to hit some of these numbers. Um, no, nobody should rely on just streaming because streaming hopefully could be a baseline, mm-hmm. right? That covers some expenses, but you still need to make money from other other places to be able to reinvest in your career, right? It's like, nice to be here, but if I can't put more money into growing it, then eventually that streaming is going to go down, so I got to keep feeding that beast too. That's the, the way I, I look at that. Might be need to do like a graph. I feel like we need to whiteboard stuff more often. So the whiteboard? Yeah, I need to, I really need to like draw stuff out for, for people to see some of the uh, the concepts. I think we could do better at, at some of that, but this is the Freeform Pod. <laughs> Dame, shout out to Dame. By the way, Dame, a special shout out to Dame because he's over at Two Loss now. If y'all don't know about Two Loss, they are a distributor. Um, actually, one of the few distributors that we're willing to actually talk about on this platform, promote and support. And now they have given us a little bit of support. So we want to let y'all know a little bit about Two Loss. Okay, let's do it. Two Loss is a distribution platform that has some pretty dope artists on it. They go underground, but they got um, the Pink Sweats. Um, I think 070 Shake is, yep. o- is over there. He's on the roster. Then you got guys like Lil Mabu over there for those who who acquired that taste as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just you know I know he look controversial. Some mm-hmm. dope artists over there, <laughs> <laughs> but at the uh, at the same time we have some artists that are our clients and that we work with that have actually had an excellent experience. Not from just the regular streaming. They're not a distro kid. Right, you yeah. have the distro kid, then you have the label services where they're pretty much a label for real doing it for you. They're that nice in between for artists that do want a little bit of help, like help with streaming, help with just navigating the industry mm-hmm. and getting real customer service. Right? Yeah. At the end of the day, we've seen a lot of dope people. Uh, I mean, we have a lot of dope people in Quaintness that we that helped us learn. Like, yo, no, this is a dope platform worth supporting because we're seeing our clients like speak pretty highly of it. So if you want to check out Two Loss, we encourage you to do it ASAP while we have this free code for you to hop in and just get a feel for what it looks like versus your current platform. We are in support of it. Go put in no label. That's N-O-L-A-B-E-L. No S, just no label when you create your profile and you'll be able to hop in for free. Support or at least check out Two Loss because they're supporting people like us and that helps us put out as much free information as possible. Next comment. At 20 Deuce said, with all the music dropping, people will forget that song so damn fast. That's a horrible idea. Yes, terrible. Well, and I wanted to touch on, it was the comment before because I feel like it ties in this too, right? Where Which one? The, the guy says something about like paying for the past. I think I get what he's saying, man. Okay, what does he mean by that? He's basically saying, I am paying to go backwards, right? We've evolved from downloading music. You know, I can't remember the last time I clicked download on a song. Ugh. Uh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, at least, at least seven, eight years ago, if I really think about That's it. That's your ick. Yeah, 100%. But a download link? Crazy, bro. Don't send me no download link. Send me a streaming link. Um, at least a YouTube link. Um, but it's like, now I have to pay to go back. In an area where no other media form I really pay attention to is forcing me to do it. Mm-hmm. So when I go watch my movies, watch my TV shows, watch my sports, like I alluded to, I can stream this shit. I'm good. Yeah. I can just download one or two, maybe three apps, and I'm good. And then now when I want to listen to music, I have to either download this shit, or to your point, I got 20 artists I like, and there's 20 different apps I have to pay attention to and mm-hmm. pay for. I'm not doing that. I'm I'm too far gone. Like I said, I I personally believe I'm the representative of the lazy music fan everywhere. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, I'm not doing that shit. I get it, bro. Like I said, that only model is the streaming platform that allows people to buy on the platform. Like OnlyFans. Right? Like yeah, basically like OnlyFans and all my OnlyFans profiles are on this same 
space, right? Yeah. That model. And then maybe you would encourage some people to be free. Like, I'm trying to flesh it out and try to make it make sense, right? So it was like, oh, yeah, you're a big artist, so you can charge your $5, and this person could charge their 5 and 10 and $100, whatever. Or this person's running a gimmick, so they're doing 1000 or 2000 or whatever, right? They're running a play. But then maybe most of the artists are building their their base, right? So most of them still have their stuff free, right? On the same platform, but you can do a value ladder up, right? So we're all on this same platform. Some people are charging. Some people are not. Some people are charging sometimes. So I'm charging for this particular project, but I'm not charging it. So it's all in the same space. I can see that working. Yeah, that's 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 literally the OnlyFans model. It's crazy. Like as you said, I'm like, damn, bro, that's how the, the you know the OnlyFans crazy <laughs> getting that shit off. You know what I feel Maybe like? You should do some research, man. You can make us rich. Maybe, man. You know, if I got to do it for the sake <laughs> of the pod, bro, I, I, you know, I love traversing new territory for information, man. That's the type of person I am. <laughs> but I, you know what I feel like? If, if an artist wanted to really see how well that community could take the, to take that. And I'm I'm thinking this in real time, so don't judge me, and I ain't seen nobody do it yet. Okay. But Instagram has the subscription feature. Okay. Right? The subscription feature allows you, I believe, to pick from a set amount of prices, or you can set your own price. I don't re- remember which one it is. And for those of you that, that don't know, or uh, maybe don't have access to it yet, subscription is a feature that Instagram rolled out a couple months ago where fans can pay for access to your content. Right? Now, what I think an artist could try if they wanted to see is go set a price, make a cool little visualizer, almost like a canvas or, you know, a 9 by 16 visualizer with your song on it. Mm-hmm. Upload it, maybe a couple songs, and see how many people out your fan base will pay for that. Because what makes me think you could get a good gauge is like, okay, I, I don't have to leave and get a new platform. I can still at least be in the platform I already know. Yeah. And like. Yeah. And see. And I want, I would love somebody to try that. And just, cause I, the skeptic in me says that that shit ain't gonna work. That's what my heart is, is pushing me towards. You gotta have a pull to make it work. Yeah. The, 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 the optimist in me says that you might get like 20 people to do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> but again, and, it's a sacrifice. It's a it's a short term and long term play, and I think that's what people have to remember. Because you also lose the long tail if you go ten years into the future. All right, now you have as many people discovering, right, and consuming mm-hmm. passively, the which that money could have been yeah made up exactly. Mm-hmm. This person Duck Arkady says, "Great concept. I also think your ads on Instagram and Facebook, etc., should be oriented to aim towards your website as well too. Whatever it's current." Uh, it depends. Mm-hmm. We'll we'll get to that actually. There's this other one that's more relevant in breaking things down. Velvet underscore bastard said it's funny. This will <laughs> <laughs> this will work for established artists with a loyal fan base. Mid sized artists may get a bag in the short term, but may damage their long term career prospects. And then third, new artists should avoid this strategy unless their music is suitable for DJs. I don't quite understand the DJ part. Yeah, I'll take some, a moment yeah. to process this, but I do agree with the first half of that sentence. <laughs> Should avoid this strategy. They broke it down perfectly. So a lot of times people are saying this stuff and you might see people with fan bases do certain strategies, but you're not in that position. You know, since the beginning of this channel, basically, we've been talking about, like, don't be busting moves that you're not in, in, in position to do. Yes. You know bro. what I mean? Yes. I, if... if People listening and watching don't take nothing else away from this. And we've said this before, right? Streaming platforms are just marketing platforms. Yes. Or they're moving towards being there, right? Somebody, even this initial paid post. Paid marketing. Paid marketing, right? Even this initial post, right? Use streaming as a lead magnet and convert the listener into a buyer. Remove it from streaming. Well, besides the removing from streaming part, that first half of that, is basically what streaming platforms are trying to get you to do anyway. Hey, use us as a conduit to be discovered by new people and figure out how to make some money off of motherfuckers. That's that's the most that we could do. We we we're seeing the literal behavior of the streaming platforms move towards being paid marketing platforms. Spotify yes. is the, the biggest example of it. Spotify in the last two years alone 
has made massive changes to the back end of their platforms that all point to like, hey, we want a little bit of that Facebook money. You know what I'm saying? We want a little bit of that pay advertising money. And in order for us to do that, we have to make ourselves a discovery tool and be a, 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 a asset to you in that. Yeah. A lot of these moves, like he said, make sense for mid-size to bigger artists because at those levels, the discovery methods have already been figured out or they have enough of an audience that there's some organic discovery coming from word of mouth, you know what I'm saying, people mm-hmm. sharing and doing things like that. So if you are not at the level where that is happening for you, then yeah, this guy's completely right. You are basically shooting yourself in the foot. You are literally asking out one of your biggest um, chances to be heard and seen by new people. Yep. Now, you you have other platforms that you figured out how to do that on. Okay. Uh, you got other platforms that you figured out how to do that on. Maybe your paid marketing is is tight. You know what I'm saying? You seeing some return? Yeah. Like these are these are cool ideas to experiment with. But I I Thanks. I really wish people would see that the same way we've seen it, bro. For the last two years, I have just viewed Spotify as a marketing platform. No different than my Facebook ad manager. No different than my Google ad manager. Only difference is you get paid a little bit of money back to market within it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, it sucks. We're not saying it's perfect. Like this person said it, um, basically that summarized. Like Wancho Jack said, in my head, now that I understand the music industry a bit more, that's what streaming platforms technically are. Yeah, you technically are already advertising yourself, mm-hmm. right? Because he, he wants this whole video is basically, hey, well, just put a snippet or put your music out there for a short term and then bring people back to something. They are lead magnets. That's what you're doing on advertising. Once you get folks to tap into your links, tap into your fo- profile, check out your music, right? Then you push them back somewhere, whether it's your shows, your merch, whatever. You're already doing some version of this, right? You can put out music and then have a secret project, right? A gated project. You already can do some version of this. So getting rid of the streaming platforms probably isn't, the smartest move if you want a traditional like career, like you're trying to reach as many people as possible, mm-hmm. you know, like make an impact in, in that way, build value in your catalog in a traditional sense. If you just are looking to, you know, make some money, whatever that number is, I'm trying to hit six figures a year or something like that, you could probably figure that out and do that as well, right? You probably can do that. And can everybody do that? No, all right? But can a fair amount of people do that consistently? It's possible. I'll say it's possible. But this, to me, this comes down to something that we were talking about before the pod when it comes down to, I think you said it. You were like, I might as well not pay for it or something. Or Oh, I said I'm not, I'm not buying music unless it comes with something. At that point, I'm basically not even buying the music. You're buying the thing. Buying the thing. Right? Yeah. And when you say it comes with something, you're talking about maybe it came with a physical vinyl that had yeah. a dope enough picture or a it came with tape, some merch. Yeah, yeah cassette tape, right? T-shirt, picture, something. And at that point, <laughs> as a fan, this is fan mentality, Corey, right? This isn't marketing advice. This is fan mentality. I'm not buying the music unless it comes with something else, mm-hmm. right? Another cost. So I'm not really technically buying the music. I'm buying the thing. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I said, well, man, man, that's what will I am. And these other clips we've seen of people back in the day have talked about. Mm -hmm. Music has never been the thing that people have been buying. They've always been buying something else. But music has been used to get people to buy something else. And now we're back to that loop. It's full circle. And I think it's a really hard thing to stomach when I first heard it and thought about it. It was kind of mind blowing. It was weird, right? Because we do loosely throw that out there. Yeah, we're buying music, we're purchasing it, but are we really? Now we can link, put a link to the uh, in the description to that video talking about why people technically don't buy music and never have, and why you need to figure out how to monetize beyond that. I think it's mind blowing for anybody who has not seen it because I haven't been able to find an argument. To why that's not true. Yeah, no, that right? shit, yeah, that shit, that shit changed my outlook on life. I For real, know. yeah. For real, yeah. Because <laughs> now I'm looking at what other areas is that technically <laughs> true that's actually happening, right? <laughs> Check that out in the description. Um, very, very valuable video. And other than that, this is yet another episode. Of no labels necessary. I'm Brandon Sean, and I'm Corey, and we out. Peace.